This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Get ready for a teaching that feeds your spirit and your mind, where the Word is the anchor in uncertain times, and doctrine doesn't bend to culture. We keep it simple, but dive deep, revealing a truth that strengthens us, a love that emboldens, and a mission that touches the world. Let's join Rick Renner. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I've been sitting right here in this chair waiting to rendezvous with you so that we can have this wonderful time in the Word of God. And today we're going to continue our new series called 10 Steps to Block the Devil from Your Life. If you haven't figured it out yet, the devil really is looking for a way to wiggle his way into your personal affairs. And if he can find his way in there, he's going to mess things up. Maybe you've already experienced that. You've said, ah, the devil's in the middle of my life messing things up. Well, what can you do to make sure he never gets in there? That's what this series is about. And if you want to block his entrance to your life, you need to hear this series again and again and again. It is so practical and enjoyable and helpful, and it comes with a study guide. Please order the study guide. I believe that when you read the information while you're seeing or hearing the series, it really causes that information, that revelation to be firmed up on the inside of you. So please order both. And I remind you that right now we're offering you my book called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. The far words are written by my friend Perry Stone and Joseph Z. The subtitle says how the events of Noah's Ark and the flood are relevant to the end of the age. Have you ordered yours yet? If not, you need to order yours today. And when this arrives and you get your hands on it, you're going to say, wow, because it is loaded with insights that really unravel mysteries about what was taking place in the world before the flood. Now, if you say, well, why is that important? It is important because in Matthew chapter 24, 37, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, it's going to be replicated again just before the coming of the Son of Man. So whatever was happening before the flood, it's going to happen again just before the rapture of the church. Well, that's our period. So we need to know what we're going to be dealing with in the upcoming years. And all of that is in this book. So please order yours. And finally, I'm so happy to tell you that you can go online or call us and order your copy of the RIV of James and Jude. This is really a life work. It is a monumental work. It takes a long time to produce this material, and I've put everything that I have into it, and it's gone through layers of other scholars that are looking at it and working at it with me. I call it a study Bible for people of faith. The subtitle says, A Conceptual Interpretation of the Greek New Testament with Footnotes and Commentaries. I really like the RIV, but for me, the treasure is in the footnotes and the commentary. But this is the release of James and Jude. Now, the next one will be First and Second Peter. Then after that, we're going to be releasing First and Second Thessalonians. But now you can order James and Jude. So please go online to order yours now. And I want to tell you that today only, are you listening? Today only, you can get a free copy of my book called Renner A to Z, which is comments and quotes by Rick Renner on 400 Bible topics A to Z. I put a lot of work into this and I want you to have it. It's like an anthology of quotes and comments on 400 different topics in the New Testament almost 1,800 quotes and comments. And it's my gift to you, but today only, and one per household. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you. We're people of faith. We are people of prayer. And we really believe that, as Jesus said, if we would agree as touching anything, He will do it for us. So let us know how to pray. We'll agree with you in prayer. And Jesus will move to action that the Father might be glorified and He will do what needs to be done in your life. And in fact, before we get into today's program, I want to read a few testimonies. One brother in the Lord called to let us know he is so thankful that we prayed with him to receive Christ about eight months ago. He's really enjoying his new life. He was delivered from drug addiction 
and wanted to say thank you for your prayers, they're working. Amen. And if you need prayer, we want to pray with you too. But listen to this next testimony. Another man called to let us know that after he called for prayer about a serious illness, his test came back negative. The previous doctor was telling him that he had all these diseases, but he went to another doctor and had more blood tests concerning rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. He was cleared, and the doctor says he has no issues in his body. Many of our team members had been praying with him, and we rejoiced to hear the good news. Praise God! But here's one final testimony. A woman earlier called to order the book Paid in Full. When she was recently reading it, she came across the postcard from our production department tucked inside one of the pages saying that they'd prayed over the shipment. She had to call to tell us how much that blessed her, and it literally brought her to tears. She said that no one has ever prayed over anything she has received like that before. She said she will keep it in there from now on and cherish it forever. She loves this ministry so very much. Well, we love you too. And that's why we want to pray for you. So please, if you have a prayer need, reach out to us and we'll begin to pray with you right now. Just send us an email or call the number that is on the screen. But reach for your Bible. And today we're returning to the series, 10 Steps to Block the Devil from Your Life. Step number six, that's what we're going to be covering today. Invest spiritually in your children. Now, I want to tell you that I have a series called What to Teach Your Children. It's a five-part series. And if you go online and look at our store, you will see where you can order this and you can order it because it is really good and it will help you know what you need to be teaching your children. But today we're going to see about the need to invest spiritually in children. Psalm 127, 3 through 5 says, verse 3, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. Verse 4, As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Verse 5, Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies at the gate. Your children are supposed to be a blessing to you. Now, let's say that you're older and you didn't teach your kids the right things. Now they're adults and really you don't feel like your kids are a blessing to you. Well, if that is the truth, then you need to repent for not investing spiritually in your kids. And you may even need to ask your kids for forgiveness that you didn't do a better job as a parent. But the fact is, if you invest spiritually in your kids, not only will they be a blessing to you, they are the heritage of the Lord. And when you get older, they will deal with your enemies. That's what this verse promises. And my friends, you do not want the devil to wiggle his way into your kids. Ay, ay, ay. Keep the devil out of your kids. You don't want messed up kids. And you know the devil's going to try to mess them up. So you need to know what steps to take to block him from finding entrance to your children. Now, Denise and I have three sons. They have three wives, and we have eight grandchildren. Everybody is serving God, and I'm so thankful for His grace that has enabled that. Today, our three sons, again, they've got three wives. They've got their own kids. Our sons are respectable. They're honorable. They're each serving in an area of the ministry. I'm so proud of our sons. But my friends, if you want to have good fruit in your kids, you have to invest in your kids. You can't sit around and hope that they grow up and become good kids. You've got to put the right seed in the ground if you want to have a good harvest from your children. That's just the way it is. So building a solid Christ-centered foundation under your kids is essential. And we read in Proverbs 22, verse 6. Listen to this powerful verse. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I'm going to read it again. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. This verse is so important. I want to take it apart for you. Let's begin by looking at those words, train up. The Hebrew word describes taste buds and palate. Taste refers to the most basic sensations of sweet, sour, salty, and bitter that we experience with the tongue. And the palate refers to the overall sensory perception of food and drink, including taste, aroma, texture, 
and even temperature. So really, when the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go, it means give your child the rice taste buds. Give him a sensory perception of the way he should go. The word child that is used here in Hebrew describes, describes a youngster in his formative years. The way he should go in Hebrew describes the path, the road, or the way he should go the right way. The word old describes one that is mature, one that is aged, or one that is older. And the word depart means to go aside, to leave, or when used in a spiritual sense, it depicts apostasy or one leaving the way of faith. And here we have God's promise. Are you ready? That when our children are young, if we give them a taste for the things of God, if we give them a taste for Jesus, a taste for the Word of God, a taste for loving church and serving the church, if we give them a taste for those things and give them a sensory experience that is so wonderful when they get older, even if they depart, God promises they will come back to it. Now, I want to use the example of taste buds and palate of Denise and me. Denise grew up on a little farm in northeast Oklahoma. I mean, she really grew up on a farm. They grew their own vegetables. They grew corn. They grew green beans. They grew okra. They grew squash. They grew cucumbers, tomatoes. They ate all of it. Wow. And guess what Denise ate when she was growing up? That's what she ate. They never had soft drinks in their home. They had almost no sugar in their home. They ate from the garden. That's how Denise was raised. And guess how Denise eats today? She still eats like a rabbit. You know why? Because that's what was formed in her taste buds in her formative years. On the other hand, my mother, who was precious and really gave me a taste for the things of God, did, got, did not give me a taste for eating correctly. In our home, I'm just going to read you because I don't want to make a mistake. My mother gave us fried, greasy foods, sugar-loaded cereals, fast food, potato chips of all kinds. And in fact, we ate so many potato chips in our house that we didn't just order a bag. We ordered bags and bags. And we even ordered those cartons that had a whole assortment of different kinds of potato chips. Ugh, I just loved it. Then my dad began to eat shoestring potatoes in cans. I thought that was really eating. And then we had all kinds of bologna sandwiches. In fact, I thought the whole world ate bologna sandwiches. And we didn't eat just bologna sandwiches. We ate it with white bread. I'm talking about the white bread that when you put it in your mouth, it turns to mush. And we would load it with not mayonnaise, but Miracle Whip until it was like a heaping pregnant sandwich. It was bologna and the heaps of mayonnaise or Miracle Whip. And then we begin to put onion salt on it. And not only that, we also ate canned vegetables. I can't remember ever having fresh vegetables. We had TV dinners. I love those TV dinners. We had lots of sugar-loaded soft drinks and desserts, and we put loads of margarine on everything we ate. And in fact, I never tasted real butter until I was about 20 years old. And I remember the first time I ate real butter, I was shocked. I said, what is that? I never tasted butter. We'd grown up with margarine, and we were so addicted to sugar that if we ate cantaloupe, now what does cantaloupe look like when you eat it? You clean it out, and it looks like a crescent moon there on your plate. Well, look at all that empty space in that crescent. Rather than have all that empty space, my grandfather Renner taught us to load it with sugar and round it out so it was completely round. There was more sugar than there was cantaloupe. That's the way I was raised to eat. So guess what my taste buds liked and craved when I became a young man? I wanted greasy, junky, fried food. I thought that was really good eating. Well, then we got married, and guess what? We had a little crisis in our marriage right from the beginning because Denise wanted to feed me healthy food from the garden. And I said, excuse me, I am not eating that. I'm not eating that. I wanted fried, greasy, junky food because I did not have a taste for what she was eating. My taste buds had been formed differently. Now, guess what? 
Today, Denise still eats like her mother fed her, and I'm still tempted to eat junky food like my mother fed me, but I've learned a lot along the way, so I'm eating better. But in the very same way, we have to develop the taste buds of children for the right things spiritually. You've got to give them taste buds for the presence of God when they're young. And as they get older, they will desire it. You've got to give them taste buds for the Bible when they're young. And when they get older, they'll come back to it. You've got to give them taste buds for the church and serving the church and regularly going to church. You've got to give them a taste for those things and give them a wonderful sensory experience that is so enjoyable that when they get older, they will not depart from it. Or if they do, they'll come back to it. And it's very interesting that statistics show that the older we get, we really do return to what was important to us when we were younger. Now, I advise you, if you have youngsters or if you have grandchildren, read them the Bible. Use Bibles that are filled with colorful pictures. When I was a child, my mother would lay by me every single night and she would read to me from her books, stories of the Bible. And oh, I love the stories, but I love the pictures. It just made it come alive. And then my mother brought me records of Bible stories that were animated. And I would listen to those records over and over and over because it caused the Bible stories to come alive in me. I still cherish those memories to this day. And I know the love I have for the Bible today was created in my spiritual taste buds by my mother. When your kids are young, play for them praise and worship songs. I bet you, if you were raised in a Christian home, can remember the songs you sang when you were a child. I bet you can, because songs stay with us. Our kids remember the songs they sang when they were very, very young. Denise and I grew up in the Baptist church. Well, today, people are not singing hymns in most of the churches where we go to minister. But guess what Denise and I love to sing when we're driving in the car together? We're still singing hymns. We haven't attended a church that sings hymns for decades and decades and decades. But those hymns, which were put in us when we were children, they are still with us. We've never departed from it. And in fact, as we get older, we begin to recall many of those hymns. And that's exactly what Proverbs says, that when they get old, they will not depart from it. Wow. Listen to Galatians 6, verse 7 and 8 from the Message Bible. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, even ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. All he'll have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's Spirit do the growth work in him, harvests a crop of real life eternal life. And my friends, I want to encourage you of planting the right seeds in your kids, especially in their formative years, or maybe your kids are now grown up. How about your grandkids? Take every opportunity you have to give your grandkids taste for the things of God and make it a wonderful sensory experience. So they're going to want to never leave the things of God, or if they do, they will come back to it. And don't make the tragic mistake of saying, well, I'll teach them when they get older. When they get older, it's too late. They've already left their formative years. And some parents make the mistake of saying, well, I don't want to force my kids to go to church. I don't want to pressure them to go to church just because I go to church. You know what? That is nonsense. Do you ask your kids in the morning if they want to go to school? Of course not. You know they need to go to school. You don't give them the option of staying home. And if you ask your kids, hey, do you want to go to school or do you want to sleep and stay home and watch TV and play games? They're going to choose to skip school and stay home. That's just the way flesh behaves. It gravitates towards selfishness. You tell your kids they're going to school because you believe school and education is important. If that is true about school, how much truer is that about spiritual education? And one thing that is really sad is some parents raise their kids to be smart and to be educated and to be good in their profession, but they don't teach their kids spiritual things. And as a result, they grow up unsaved. They're educated. They're making money, but they're going to hell. My friends, what profits a man if he gains the whole world, but he loses his own soul? 
And again, we're told in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And if you have youngsters or if you have grandchildren, one way you can guarantee to block the enemy is by giving your kids and your grandkids taste buds for the things of God. And when they get older, when they're more advanced in age, the Bible promises he or she will not depart from it. And if they do, they'll come back. That is the promise of God. So just by using common sense and taking advantage of the time God has given us when our kids are younger, and by the way, our time with our kids is temporary. It doesn't last forever, especially those formative years. Seize that moment to give your kids and your grandkids a taste for the things of God. And when they get older, they will not depart from it. And by just taking this approach, you will block the devil's entrance into their lives. Say amen. Oh, so good. But I've got more to say. I'll be back in just a moment. Someone asked the question, why did Jesus sweat blood in the Garden of Gethsemane? Well, that is referred to in Luke 22, 44, which says, and being in an agony. That word agony, the Greek word agonizo, describes a wrestling match. Jesus was in a wrestling match between his will and his spirit, coming to the place where he was surrendering to do the will of God. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And the Bible says, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Well, medical science has examined this and they have determined that Jesus had a real medical condition in which a person feels such excruciating pressure mentally that their body begins to respond as if it is under real pressure. And in fact, the perceived pressure is so real, the top layer of skin separates from the second layer. That vacuum fills with blood, which then oozes through the pores of the skin as blood, sweaty blood. And the very fact that this term is used in this verse tells us that when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, it was the wrestling match of his life and he was under great mental pressure as he was surrendering to go to the cross. The devil is trying to wiggle his way into your relationships, health and finances, every part of your life that you count dear. How do you block his insidious attacks? In this refreshingly transparent series, 10 Steps to Block the Devil from Your Life, Rick Renner teaches you 10 ways to block the devil from gaining a foothold in your affairs. And he candidly shares how these steps have worked in his own life. In this 10-part series, Rick will teach you how to safeguard your health against an attack, how to ensure your marriage is protected, how to make certain the devil has no access to your children or grandchildren, how to keep the devil from making a mess of your finances, this series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $20. We also want to offer you Rick's book, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. This fully illustrated book will uncover mysteries hidden in the Bible that have a great impact on our world today, and it can be yours for $29. Additionally, the first installment of the Renner Interpretive Version, a study Bible for people of faith, is available now for pre-order. This hardcover resource is an interpretation of the New Testament books James and Jude that includes footnotes and insightful commentary. Pre-order the RIV now at a limited time discounted price of $30. Don't miss this special offer. Bundle the series, 10 Steps to Block the Devil from Your Life, and the book Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner. You say, Rick, where are you? Well, I'm seated in one of the edit suites for our TV channels. And in this room, there's all kinds of equipment and computer screens and seven people who all day long are editing TV programs in the Russian language for our channels. And we have two channels. One is TBV, which is a national channel, which covers all 11 time zones of Russia. When I say that, it nearly overwhelms me because of the responsibility and the honor that God has given us to do that. But we also have GNC, which is a satellite network, which reaches into 83 nations of the world. You know, in our overall ministry, we have more than 250 employees, but the TV ministry is growing really, really fast. 
And I'm so thankful for the people who sit in this room and work from morning to evening editing TV programs that are going to people across 11 time zones of Russia and into 83 nations of the world. Is that just amazing? Only God could do something like that. And I wanna say thank you for being one of our partners. We're able to do all of this because of the anointing and the grace of God and the call of God, but also because he called you to be a partner with us. We can do the work, but it takes finances. And with the gifts you send to our ministry, you're putting the fuel in the tank so we can do all this wonderful ministry. And if you're not a partner yet, I'm asking you today to please pray about joining hands with us to become a partner so we can take the signal of God's Word into more homes in 83 nations of the world and across the 11 time zones of Russia. And I want to say thank you for everything you'll do. As you've been listening to me today, maybe you've thought, well, you know, my kids are older and they are really messing up. The devil has already wiggled his way into their lives. Well, if you've realized you made a mistake when they were younger, repent. And if you did what was right and they're still messing up, then you can claim Proverbs 22, 6, that they're going to come back to the truths that you gave them when they were younger. That is your verse to lay hold of and to proclaim. And you can reach out to us by calling the number on the screen or sending us an email and we'll pray with you for your kids or for your grandkids. But please order the entire series, which is called 10 Steps to Block the Devil from Your Life and the Study Guide. Please also order the book, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters in the World Before the Flood. And please be sure to place your order for the RIV, A Study Bible for People of Faith, James and Jude. But I want to pray for you right now. So put your hand on your heart. Father, I pray for parents. I pray for those that are grandparents. Give all of us wisdom for how to spiritually invest in our kids and our grandchildren in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been good, but I'll see you in the next program. Until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says where the word of a king is, there is power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.